good stuff. Hi, this is Seamless, and today I'm going to talk about more uh, fun things you can do with Harmer filters. So last time I touched on how you could make uh, custom resonance maps and have it do its own uh, uh, specialized resonance shape and movement and whatever based on that. Um, but another fun thing is that I, that I touched on that I didn't really talk about is that you can do the same thing for the main filter. You can make your own custom filter shapes. And you can do lots of fun things with this. And one thing in particular that you can do is something that someone actually asked if you could do, and that's doing uh, uh, form, form, uh, vowel filtering kind of, kind of deal. This is not something that I do a whole huge amount of. Um, usually if I want some kind of vowel -y business, I uh, use a vocoder or just FM synthesis, which is already pretty vowel -y to my ears. Um, so let's uh, show you how you do this, how, you, how this works. So, uh, here's the, the default low pass filter. It's actually, it's very, very basic. You can see what it's doing. Now, um, what you, if you do t hit this drop down window, you have a whole bunch of different filter types, a bunch of weird, confusing titled ones, and then some custom shapes. So let's click on, click on custom shapes and see how this works. So by default, custom shape is, is all max all the time. And this will mean that the shape is just whenever you move it, it's always going to be on. And so let's uh, let's put a big old notch, I guess. Not really, it's not a notch, but you know what I mean. A thing right there. And now we get a shape in here. And now observe what happens if I bring this down. It's uh, much, it's, it's reminiscent of what an actual low pass filter is supposed to be. And this is because, like, if you were to look at, if you look at the visualizer, what this is 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 not, it's not like a, a position graph of this. It's a shape of what this does to the sound, and it'll move, it'll move across the uh, vi the spectrum visually. And if you leave it, if you leave it on the bottom like this, as it passes, everything beyond it will be off, and that's how you would do that if you wanted to make a low pass filter. But um. The part where you do vowel filtering, because you, you can, you know, you can also make, you know, a very complex, a weird fa uh, phaser sounding kind of things and comb filters, and you can make them all, all very um, precise, and that's a pretty powerful thing in and of itself. But uh, the real funness comes when you mess with this width knob. So you see how we have this shape here, and it's pretty much co corresponding with what's going on here. Now, watch what happens when I move the width knob. Oh boy. Oh boy. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, KB tracking uh, before, like I mentioned with the resonance thing, we'll keep it so that it's in tune with your uh, key motions. So I mean, it's always the same distance from the uh, fundamental frequency of your note so that it'll still it'll sound in tune when you go from one note to another, or you can keep it in the middle if it's not tracking it at all, it'll always be the same note. For this kind of stuff, I actually kind of like keeping um, not not keyboard tracking because when I do, you know, I guess actually if I were to do FM synthesis, I, that's pretty much like an automatic keyboard tracking of the vocal format kind of sound. But in vocal decks stuff that I do, I generally don't care about pitch. In fact, the more one of the uh, more fun things you can do with vocal decks is when you have the format movement um, not coinciding with the pitch of the main bass sound, the carrier sound. So this is extraordinarily basic, but this should get you a pretty it should give you a pretty good idea about um, how Harmer's filters work. They're way more complex. Um, in the advanced tab, you can uh, you can also set, select where the filter is in um, relation to everything else. You can also put filter one and filter two opposite uh, a whole bunch of different stuff, and if you look at um, here, we have the, the serial, serial and parallel knobs. So we could say that you have these these filters in serial, where filter one is going to filter two, but it'll, and then it'll pass through all these things first, and then go to filter two. So you can do lots of neat stuff with things in between. Um, this knob here can, can actually be just a little bit confusing, but if you go into the uh, help file, if it can go into the help file, let's see, it should. There you go. We have a nice little picture of what each position does and what, what the position is supposed to be if you, for your desired result. Um, 
And I hope that makes sense. If not, hit F1, you can look at it yourself. Um, so this, this is, you know, extraordinarily straightforward. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. And uh, have a good day. Yeah. Four minute filters. You can make your own. Good stuff.